Stacy and Nicole, motivating you 360 degrees, real talk in a real world. That's Stacy. That's Nicole. And we're motivating you 360 degrees. Our topic today is on nutrition no nos. <laughs> and this is going to be series one, episode one of many. We can and talk about it every day. <laughs> exactly. And we're very passionate about a lot of different things. And so today we are going to just give you a sampling of where all of our passions are so you can get a good idea of what to look forward to as you tune into series after series of, of this particular topic. I'm going to give it over to Nicole and she's going to get you started. And um, we really hope you enjoy this and learn some things at the end. So first thing that I want to give to you guys is organic versus commercial. And organic crops are actually very important to start switching over from commercial because you don't have all the foods that have the um, pesticides, the herbicides, the fertilizers, the fungicides. Ew! Okay, so, you know, people are eating that stuff and you think about cancer and inflammation in the body and you all are that. what you uh, eat yes you are you're a big who wants fungus. to be a fungus <laughs> you're a fun guy I okay. want to be a fun guy <laughs> okay so anyway um, number one organic and the one the one thing most people think with organic is the dollar sign okay first of all get rid of that mentality get rid of it okay because there was a point in my life where it was like you know what I haven't always been where I'm at and the thing is wherever you are now you're not always going to be there you don't always have to be there you can control that Okay, so also with organic, uh, you're increasing the vitamin content, the nutrient content, the enzyme content. All that stuff is so important. And uh, there's actually research out there that shows that organic farming gives you anywhere from like 20%, 50%, depending on the foods, more nutrients, more vitamins than commercially raised. So it, it's more bang for your buck. Uh, and again, a lot of people are always saying that, you know, price is, is a factor. And, you know, I've, I've done some shopping around. I'm not going to name names here and there. But truthfully, you, you aren't paying more. You're really, you're paying almost just about the same price. Not as and, big a difference as most people would think. And, is what you're saying, yeah, right? and a lot of times you're backpedaling, you know, 20 years from now, you're going to be paying the price, you know. And it's like you can either choose now or later. And again, local like farms are a great can't way. can't afford not to try to exactly. start making these choices. And right. get out of that mindset. Because you can, you can do anything you want to do. So besides um, all those tidbits and, and organic, I would say the next thing is, is dairy. Like I just yeah. see this, this huge craze with dairy and, and people having milk and yogurt. And I, I, see, I see so many competitors and so I many people. Die. And I'm like, why are they eating yogurt? Um, I mean, truthfully. It's causing inflammation, causing infection, bloating. Mucus. Things that bloat you are an infection. No. It's inflammation. So with, with dairy, um, store-bought is pasteurized. And so pasteurization was actually invented here in Chicago in uh, like the early 1900s by Louis Pasteur. And so that's actually to kill off all the bacteria. So, but as it kills off all the bacteria, it's killing off all the good stuff, the good bacteria you need for your gut. And your gut houses 75% of your immunity. So just like when a baby is born, they say breast is best because you're getting all the mother's immunity, you're getting all the nutrients. All, all, all the good stuff in there. So if you're going to the store and you're buying the store-bought milk or the yogurt and it's pasteurized, you're really kind of defeating the purpose. Again, this is, this is the standpoint I'm looking at. I'm looking at food not just to look a certain way, but to feel a certain way and as my medicine. And so also what you're putting in your body, it's like I can eat, you know, chicken every day. And really, I would never recommend to eat chicken to anybody every day. You know, and again, and I could look a certain way, but in the end, am I going to be healthy? No. So mm -hmm. it's like, again, what are you putting in your body? And with, with yogurt, there's so much hype with dairy and milk, like three dairy a day, three dairy a day. How about your three leafy greens a day? Because you're going to get your calcium, your vitamins, your um, cancer fighting properties, your phytonutrients in that versus in your dairy. And plus, with all the hormones and everything that are in there, the antibiotics that these animals are plugged with, cows normally 12 weeks producing milk. So when they're injected with a growth hormone, that is creating or giving them the opportunity to 
give milk 12 more weeks. That's not normal. So that's stressing the cows out. You are what you eat. Yeah. So, so most of us are stressed out. It's genetically modified. Eating stressed out foods because they're sick, they're plugged with antibiotics. You're going to be stressed out people. Normal. You're going to be stressed out. And you're stressing out your organs. You're just completely stressed out. So... Again, another another thing, and also inflamed, um, bloated, stressed out fungicides. Who wants that? And then the pus. If you want to talk about, I don't know if I want to, <laughs> but it's gross, and that's in the udders of the cows because they've got mastitis. <sighs> yeah. So like when they're and that happens when they're in, injected with the hormones. So that's why. It's important to make sure. I mean, yeah, this is this is yeah, pretty gross. Our camera crew is like making faces. It's <laughs> nasty. So, so they're getting educated too. But you were, I mean, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, there's going to be a whole uh, a whole episode that is totally on this. So there's going to be a lot more information about it, so we can break it down and have reference material. And we have a Pinterest board that is going to revolve around each show. So you can go to it and see references for articles and books and everything that we're talking about. We'll have it all there. That way you can look it up and, and read and learn more as well. A couple more things that we want to just cover about our passions and nutrition. One is, thing on dairy, really is, quick. Okay. I um, I for a long time I've wanted to do raw dairy. So I I for like 30 years I've I, I can't do dairy. I'm, I just I can't. I'm intolerant to it. And so. Um, I went to a farm. It was on my to-do list, and finally I got it to done. So I went there and I did raw milk and raw yogurt. And for the first time in my life, I didn't get sick. So and now I'm actually incorporating that back in. Um, and and again, you can support your local farms. That's a place where you can get the raw dairy. But again, if you have to get it at the store, certified certified organic is going to be best because then you know it's free of the antibiotics and the hormones. So a couple other things, like I said, that we're passionate about are items that are sugar-free, uh, that have artificial sweeteners, the aspartame. I sugar-free Jello. I it's I, I could go on and on and on. It's just it's killing it's killing everybody. The diet soda with the aspartame. I'm pretty sure it's putting holes in your brain. Pretty sure of that. So and your gut. Things with red dye number forty among many. We believe that all of these things that. Are, are put into these processed foods. No, we believe. There's research. Well, there's research, yes. That that if you look at uh, ADD and autism and how the foods that you're putting into your body and your children's body are affecting them, those those are huge topics that we're going to talk about a lot more later. The, the thing with the sugar-free is I think a lot of people get into this mindset of only counting macros and not I don't looking count my calories. I know you no. don't. And but some people do I and there's a lot of people out there that feel like counting calories is going to help them with with their weight loss, but what they need to not take their their focus off of is the quality of the food. It's not just about the quality. quantity. It's all it's quality. About the quality <laughs> of the food that they put in their body and the long-term effects. Mm -hmm. So we'll also be talking a lot more about wheat and how the wheat nowadays is completely Completely different. There's a couple of really great books. Wheat Belly is one of them that I love that I've read. And uh, gluten, we're going to be talking more about that as we go through all of these episodes. And we really want your input on topics that interest you. You can, on our fan page, uh, on Facebook, you can tweet. On YouTube. On YouTube, you can make comments about things that you're interested in, in us talking about. And, you know, I mean, there's probably things that we don't know, I'm sure a lot, and we'll research it. And we'll provide those articles and provide that information so you will be able to validate it yourself too. I think just to end too with um, an important point, like nutrition no-nos, like she said, you know, there's things we don't know. There's there's a lot that we do know. Yeah, we're 40 years in the making from, you know, not just from textbook. Textbooks teach you a lot, but you know, life. Life. our own testimonials, our own client testimonials, yeah. and then certifications, continuing education, um, research. You know, we're, we're checking stuff out, you know, and, and with our own certifications and stuff like that. So we have a lot of stuff to back us up in that. And like I said, I'm writing a book on my health history. And um, so it's, it's like I said, you were, you were talking about, um, what was my train of thought? <laughs> Sorry. I got to cut. We're going to cut. Cut. Snick tip time. Tip time. You try and say that fast times. <laughs> we'll give you a prize if you send in a video of you saying that three times really fast. For real. Okay. So our 
snip tip for you, your takeaway, is that if you've got a budget and pick one thing that you can go to Whole Foods and buy that'll help you make some positive changes with your nutrition, we are going to suggest that you buy your meat there. One thing. And kind of a little extra snick tip is that we want you to take baby steps with this. These are huge changes and you may have already made some. Pick one small thing and if you aren't sure about what that one small thing should be, reach out to us, connect with us, and we will help you figure it out. Remember, we did not start where we're at now. It's like, you know, back in college, what, I lived at the drive throughs at, you know, all those different places. And then, you know, with each passing year, there are certain things I've eliminated here and there. So it wasn't like I eliminated everything overnight. But, you know, for me, my own personal journey, it's like, you know, I don't eat cheese. I'm okay with that. I don't eat bread. I'm okay with that. I don't have, you know, store-bought milk. I'm okay with that. So again, you know, I didn't do all this overnight. So don't think you have to be like us or or that we're these, you know, snobs and these purses, yeah. these nutrition snobs. It's it's about baby steps in your own personal journey and noticing, you know, you know, the benefits yourself, whether it's your physique that's changing or your overall health. All right. That's Stacy. That's Nicole. We'll see you next time.